You're listening to Randall's Thoughts yeah. on HBCU Pulse Radio. Yes, yeah, so when I woke up Saturday morning, I had every intention of taking a break. My brain was overloaded with news because I'm always reading. I'm always watching. I am a media consumer. I love media. So I'm seeing everything about Donald Trump getting indicted and the Espionage Act. Then I'm an NBA fan. The NBA Finals on right now. The Nuggets are, are poised to win as I'm recording this, right? So I'm just, just so overloaded with news. So I decided, you know what? Monday next week is going to be crazy, so I'm going to take a break, and I decided I was going to step away for a couple of days. But in these moments, it is very important to log out of social media before you get sucked back in. And if you don't do that, your news break is going to end prematurely, and you'll be sucked right back into whatever is going on at the moment and whatever hot topic people are talking about. And of course, the hot topic that I got sucked back into happened to be about higher education and affirmative action. So Fox News just released a documentary entitled The Diversity Verdict about the affirmative action case and the history of affirmative action from their point of view and from their slant. And I saw an article where they referenced one of the main points of the documentary. The article, Asian American student with 1590 SAT score rejected by six elite colleges blames affirmative action was published by Fox News, and I read it, and I was very perplexed at the whole entire gist of the article. The article focused on John Wayne, an 18-year-old from Florida, and one of the plaintiffs in the Supreme Court case, Students for Fair Admissions versus Harvard. Now, mind you, Students for Fair Admissions also has another court case against the University of North Carolina. So they're trying to cover public and private institutions in regards to affirmative action, trying to get it taken down. So John appears to be an exceptionally capable student scoring 1590 out of 1600 on the SAT exams and boasting a 4.65 GPA way better than I did when I was in high school. However, he was denied admission to all six institutions he applied to. He spoke about it with Fox News' Laura Ingram in the documentary. So the top tier schools I applied to were MIT, Caltech, Princeton, Harvard, Carnegie Mellon, and UC Berkeley. According to Wang, he wasn't shocked by the rejections. His guidance counselors had specifically warned him that it would be hard for him to be admitted to these, quote, elite schools, particularly as an Asian American student. He was clearly frustrated about his information, so he quickly jumped to the conclusion that he was denied admission due to affirmative action. And he even claimed that students for fair admissions informed him that black students had a higher chance for admission to these competitive institutions than Asian American students. And when I heard that, I was like, what do black students have to do with this? Here's what he said in the documentary. I gave them my test scores and a few other things about me. And then they must have ran the model on that. And then Edward Bloom told me my results. And so they said I had a 20% chance of gaining admission to Harvard as an Asian American and then a 95% chance as an African American. So when I read and heard that statement, I was once again perplexed. I just couldn't understand how John and the students for fair admissions arrived at that point. I just don't understand how they put two and two together and got four from that. Like, oh, well, black folks, it's easy for them to get in 95%, but 20% chance you're going to get in. I just didn't understand it. And I didn't understand also why they didn't talk about The two real issues in higher education when it comes to diversity and these Ivy League and elite, quote unquote, institutions, legacy admissions and the culture of inclusiveness that these institutions have to keep up. And if anything, black applicants are even more affected by the problems that they're attributing to affirmative action. But we'll talk about that in a second, because I I got a a study that we did on HBCUPulse.com that I want to point you all to and give you the summary here on HBCU Pulse Radio. But let's talk about affirmative action. So affirmative action in higher education, by definition, refers to the practice of considering race and gender in the admission of students to universities. This practice was defended by the Supreme Court's ruling in 2003 regarding the case Grutter versus Bollinger. The judges at that time ruled in favor of affirmative action with conservative justice Sandra Day O'Connor, who was appointed by Ronald Reagan, actually siding with the liberal justices. And she said this about the outlook of affirmative action in the future. It has been 25 years since Justice Powell first 
suggested approval of the use of race to further an interest in student body diversity. We expect that 25 years from now, the use of racial preferences will no longer be necessary to further the interest that we approve today. Now, here we are 20 years later. Have things improved? Is affirmative action still needed? Does the Students for Fair Admissions have valid reasons to push for the end of affirmative action? And I think this is the most important thing watching the Fox News documentary. Are black students the real problem? Is it our fault? Well, we took a look on HBCUPulse.com at the most recent statistics, courtesy of U.S. News and World Report, for each institution that John applied to. So if you look at the chart that's on HBCUPulse.com, Asian American students comprise the highest racial population at Caltech, MIT, Carnegie Mellon, and Berkeley. Meanwhile, black enrollment at three of the four institutions that he applied to, Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon, and Caltech, didn't even reach 5%. And for all six, including Harvard and Princeton, when you look at their individual stats, black enrollment doesn't even make up 10% of each of their individual student populations. And the craziest part about it is that Berkeley has 32,000 plus students and Carnegie Mellon has 7,000 plus students. So you would think with the influx of students and the fact they have a higher admissions rate you would think that they would have more black students, but they actually have less black students than Harvard, Princeton, MIT, and the other institutions that have a lower admission rate. To me, I think that's the real case and the real story. And here's the thing we all understand. Getting into these institutions is highly competitive as they have low admission rates, like I said, and rigorous standards, and they deserve to have that. I understand it. Yet the issue of legacy admissions isn't emphasized in this case. And here's the thing. Students for Fair Admissions acknowledges that legacy admissions are a problem, and they argue that ending the practice would help achieve racial diversity if affirmative action is also ended. They argued that in a New York Times article from last year. But why fight to end affirmative action when it seems to actually be helping when you can directly challenge legacy admissions? When you look at all these institutions, and you'll see it on HBCUPulse.com, four of the six institutions that he applied to has more Asian American students than any other racial group. And then at Princeton and Harvard, you'll see that the Asian American student population is not that far off from the white student population. However, a survey conducted in 2018 by Inside Higher Ed found that 42% of admission officers at private schools admitted that legacy status was a factor in admission decisions. And additionally, the Harvard Crimson reported findings from their survey of incoming freshmen last year that 15.5% of applicants were legacies. If these numbers are accurate and reflective of all Ivy League institutions, that 15.5% would far surpass the percentage of African-Americans admitted across the board, and especially across all six institutions that John applied to. Now, here's the thing, and you know this about me if you listen to HBCU Pulse Radio. I'm all for combating systemic inequities in higher education, and it's understandable that John's lack of admission to those six institutions raises questions about the process. I get it. But jumping to the conclusion that affirmative action should be abolished and citing black students as one of the determining factors is really misguided. We're five years away from Justice O'Connor's projected timeline for the end of affirmative action. But it seems like, just like in college, the deadline of turning our assignment should be extended. I think y'all need to give us about 25 more years, maybe 50. And then we'll see then if we can get it together. And those are my thoughts on today. I really encourage you to go and look at the statistics that we have up on HBCUPulse.com. It is really illuminating. And this is going to get incredibly interesting as we see how the Supreme Court rules in this case. Like what you hear? Uh. Yeah. Subscribe to HBCU Pulse Radio on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Also, head to HBCUPulse.com to stay up to date on what's going on in the HBCU community. Thank, Thank you, you for, for listening, listening to HBCU, HBCU Pulse, Pulse Radio. Radio.